Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and we're moving on with AP Chemistry Unit 4, Section 2, and the last part of that, where we're learning about other types of reactions. Now, a lot of these you just have to learn and have to know the, the specific uh, ways in which these substances have react, and so this takes a little bit of time to, to practice on that. For example, you need to know that a metallic oxide is going to combine with water to produce a metallic hydroxide. So that means that if you have a case where you're adding solid potassium oxide to water, well, you have to know how to write the formulas for this, of course. Potassium oxide is K2O, solid, and then, of course, water is H2O. And our product is going to be a metallic hydroxide. So hydroxide means it ends with OH, of course, and the metallic part of that means that the metal, which is the potassium, in this case, is going to be your cation on your product. So the metallic hydroxide is potassium hydroxide. Now notice how I write this. I have to write it in ion form because since water is present, that means we're going to have a solution uh, that is going to be there. So these, uh, these ions are going to be swimming around in solutions. So we have potassium ions and hydroxide ions. That's your potassium hydroxide. Now, don't forget to balance the equation. So we put a, a 2 in front of the K and I believe a 2 in front of the OH, and that's going to balance this equation pretty well. Now, the next one, the next example here is very similar. This time we're adding solid strontium oxide to water. The same type of a reaction essentially, except we're essentially just substituting the strontium in place of where the potassium was in the last example. So strontium oxide is SRO, and then water is H2O, of course. And so once again, the product of this metallic oxide being added to water is going to be the metallic hydroxide. In this case, that's strontium ions and hydroxide ions. And of course, don't forget to balance that equation. So that's one type of synthesis reaction that you need to be aware of. Here's another one. A non-metallic oxide is going to combine with water to produce an acid. So like we said, metallic oxides tend to uh, produce bases, you know, hydroxides. Non-metallic oxides tend to produce acids. And so in this case here, if we have sulfur trioxide gas, that's bubbled into water. Well, sulfur trioxide is SO3. We add that to water. So the overall product seems to be, looks like if you add these up, it would be H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. And that's correct, but we have to remember that this is a strong acid, so it's going to be written in its ionized form, which is H plus aqueous, and then the hydrogen sulfate ion, which has a negative charge. So once again, you do have to be aware of which acids are strong and which acids are weak, which we learned in uh, back in Unit 3. Now, how about this one? Solid diphosphorus pentoxide reacts violently with water. So you have to know that diphosphorus pentoxide is P2O5, and we're adding it to water. And what's the product? Well, sometimes you just have to know what the product is. And if we think of an acid that has, of course, hydrogen and phosphorus and oxygen in it, probably the most common example would be phosphoric acid, H3PO4. And it's, it's kind of difficult to, to get that from just looking at the reactants and, and, and adding up the subscripts. You honestly aren't going to get that. Sometimes you just have to know which acid is formed. Either way, you do need to balance the equation, so we can do that by balancing our uh, different atoms there, and we have a balanced equation. So what's another type of reaction? Well, we know that there are decomposition reactions where you have one reactant, and that reactant is going to literally, well, decompose. That's why it's called decomposition. So you have one reactant, and it decomposes into two, or sometimes more than two, products. So there are several of these that you need to be aware of. A metallic carbonate, when heated vigorously, will often decompose into a metallic oxide and carbon dioxide gas. So a good example of that is solid calcium carbonate is heated over a flame in a crucible. So calcium carbonate, of course, is CaCO3. 
And when it's heated, we're going to get that carbon dioxide gas that's mentioned here, but we're going to have a metallic oxide. And the, the metal in the metallic oxide is the calcium. So we're going to have calcium oxide along with carbon dioxide gas. And so using that rule, you can figure out what the products are. Or likewise, if we have, instead of calcium carbonate, if we have lithium carbonate, and it's heated vigorously, well, we can take the lithium carbonate, write its formula. In the solid form, it's Li2CO3. And once again, we're going to get carbon dioxide gas, but this time it's going to be lithium oxide. So those are the products for this one. And of course, uh, make sure that the equation is balanced and looks like in this case it, it already is. Now, what about chlorates? Sometimes we have questions about metallic chlorates. When those are heated vigorously, they're going to produce a metallic chloride and oxygen gas. So in this case, if we have solid sodium chlorate in a test tube that's heated vigorously, well, we know that sodium chlorate is NaClO3. And when we heat it vigorously, we're going to get oxygen gas, O2, and the metallic chloride is going to be sodium chloride. So these are our products. Now, notice that we don't write sodium chloride in its ion form. And the reason is there is no water present here. If this had been uh, perhaps aqueous or there had been water present or if we had added water, then you'd have to ionize this. But there, there is no water, so it's going to be sodium chloride solid. And once again, don't forget to balance the equation. We can balance our oxygens there and then the sodium and the chloride ions as well. How about if solid calcium chlorate is heated vigorously? Once again, it is the same type of reaction here. We write the formula for calcium chlorate, Ca parentheses ClO3 and then a 2. And we're going to make, this time, it's going to be calcium chloride and oxygen gas. And of course, don't forget to balance the equation there as well. So we have our, our balanced equation for these. Also, you need to be aware that acids can decompose into non-metallic oxides, along with water, and bases are going to decompose into metallic oxides and water when they're heated. So this is basically the opposite of the rule that we had earlier with synthesis. We have, for example, if we have carbonic acid that's decomposing at normal atmospheric pressures, well, we write the formula for carbonic acid, H2CO3, and we know that we're going to have a non-metallic oxide produced from that. So that's carbon dioxide and water. So this is a, a fairly simple reaction. And in fact, this probably looks familiar if you were watching the last video about gas evolution reactions. What about this? If we have solid sodium hydroxide being heated in a test tube. Well, once again, we have NaOH in its solid form. And if we heat it, well, it's a base, so we're going to have a metallic oxide. So that's going to be sodium oxide along with water. So Na2O and H2O. And of course, don't forget to balance your equation whenever you write these. More often than not, these are rules that you just have to learn. You just have to know them. I hope you've learned something from this. If you have, please slam that thumbs up button. I would appreciate it if you would do that. That really helps the algorithm. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for 24 years, and I hope to see you in my next video in which we're going to move right on to Unit 4, Section 3, as well as Section 4. Thanks for watching.